Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. We haven't done one of these in a while, but we are back with a list video where we are looking at the characters guaranteed to be a future requirement. This is for characters who are going to be prerequisite characters in the future. Now, this isn't just an exercise where we're looking for characters that the community has ignored. That can be a factor, but we are also looking at how characters are obtained, how thematically important the character is, what kind of story CG can tell them. Our goal is to identify the characters where we can make advance investment in them with little chance of regret. We are looking for safe bets, not taking chances. We're not trying to impress anybody here. And the last time we made this video two years ago, we had a decent amount of success. These were the characters that we identified as potentially being future requ requirements, and we had about a 50% hit rate. We got half of them. Some of these, I'm pretty surprised, weren't characters who turn out to be prerequisite characters, we will see how we do this time. I made a long list of about 17 characters and ships, and we narrowed that down to about 11 candidates. I wanted to make it 10 again, but just some of these I wanted to talk about. Now, in this iteration of the list, I didn't include any ships this time around, but I still wanted to draw attention towards the Marauder and the Comeuppance, and that is because with CG's recent pattern on capital ships releases, any ship that has been released should just be considered as part of that. They don't release enough ships where we should be guessing which ones are going to be important. They're all important. So if you haven't been farming these ships, I would be farming the Marauder in particular because we are in this prequel moment where it is very likely that we see like Naboo ships start showing up. So look out for that where the next capital ship might be taking these types of things into consideration. We begin our list in the 11 spot with Clone Wars Chewie. Now I almost left him off the list so that we could just have an even 10, but I wanted to talk about him and I don't want to knock anybody else off. At this point, Clone Wars Chewie is a meme, but he should not be treated like he's Cup or Ugnaught or IG-86. He is still Chewbacca, and he's not useless now that Tarful gives him a home. He hits multiple pieces of criteria, he's thematically important, a lot of the player base has ignored him, and he's Galactic Republic, which makes him particularly important in this prequel moment. With each of these, we're going to look at the player data. There's two big caveats here. One, this is the swaga.gg data, so it means players who have created an account over there, and also this does include a lot of inactive accounts, so this is not reflective of the full population of active players, but it gives us some directional ideas that I think are interesting. So level 85, this is heavy grain of salt, but you have about 400,000. It just gives you an idea of how how many people are engaging, but really it's the gear level distribution that we care about, particularly the gear 13 or the relic level, at which there's only 8,000 Clone Wars Chewies. That's nothing. You can see the distribution here where most players have just not engaged with him at all. There's only 1% of the player base who has, has him at relics, only 6% at gear 12 or higher. That is basically nothing. So I am in the 6% of players who have bothered to take him to gear 12. He is somewhat annoying to gear with the amount of carbs and stun guns that he takes, but that's no longer the problem that it used to be since the introduction of the Kray Dragon. At number 10, we have Visus Mar. Now, she was on the list two years ago when we did this, and she has dropped two spots. But she still has a lot of qualities that make her a sensible character as a future requirement. She's a little bit weird, a lot of characters have ignored her, but she has a lot of importance on the Star Skiller squad, and most late game players have probably brought her to relics, but the majority of players have still largely ignored her. And as we look at the player data, we see some of that. So at level 85, there's 330,000, but the star distribution is really interesting because players may have brought her to level 85. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have her at seven stars. She's kind of all over the place. And the gear distribution is pretty even kind of all over the, all over the place with only 85,000 at relics, where the vast majority of players have just ignored her. 36, th one third of the player base just haven't bothered to work on her. Only 13% have her at relics. Now that 13% is probably
probably heavily weighted towards active players, but it's still going to be one of those incentives for CGs, particularly because of how she is obtained is a little bit more work. At number nine, we have Ezra Bridger, and he's the character I wanted to leave off the list, even though Vsys is probably more deserving, but I just didn't want too many characters of the same type, and that's gonna become a little bit more apparent as we go through this exercise. But he is thematically important. He's a main character of a show. He's a focal point of another show with Ahsoka, and he fits nicely into multiple factions, and he's a pilot. So there's just too much going on here for Ezra to not, at some point, be a requirement for something within this game. Even though he's a character that most of the player base has been engaging with. And we see this in the player data. You have a number here of 745,000 have him at level 85. That's more interesting to see maybe how many accounts have been developed with over the course of the game. There is a lot of dead accounts in that number. 803,000 for seven stars. And then what we really care about, the gear distribution, 17% at relics with 153,000. But what we could really consider here is gear 12 and 13, where we have a little bit under half the player base has him at that gear 12 or higher level. And then we also have a bunch more at gear 11, where you can see most of the player base, especially the active player base, has a Ezra Bridger that they do not need to invest too much further in to take advantage of. But again, that is only one metric. He's, what really matters here is he is a thematically critical character, and there's not other versions of him. Next up at number eight, we have Omega. She is the only existing Bad Batch character that is not currently a prerequisite. The Bad Batch series just finished up, and we are still waiting on Crosshair at a minimum. However, even though I think it likely that Omega becomes a prerequisite character, this is one I'm trying to delay Relics on, since Crosshair seems more like a marquee release to me, and would most likely knock Omega out of the squad. So I would recommend you farm her, and take her to gear 11 or gear 12 as that staging level, and then move into a whole holding pattern. That's how I'm currently handling the situation. And if she becomes a prerequisite, at that point, I'm going to be taking her up to relics. Although with data crons, especially with this tech cron right now, I'm considering it when 5e5 returns. But at a minimum, the situation that we're trying to avoid is that she becomes announced as a prerequisite, and then you're rushing to farm her shards and bring her up to gear 11 when she's a Cairo character, and that could make it a little bit more of a pain point. And with Omega, we start seeing some smaller counts with the numbers. There's only 274 at level 85. A lot of players have left her at gear 1 or at level 1. Star distribution all over the place. Most players or a plurality of the players have her at 7 stars but most players don't. And with the distribution, only 47,000 have her at relics and just the majority of players have her at level 1. 42% of players level 1 completely ignoring Omega. And even if you don't want to work on her as a character, she's just going to be too important. Gear 8 minimum. You can hold off on the Kairos at that level, uh, but the, at least you're setting her up into a situation where you can use her. And if you look at some of my old videos, my old Grand Arena videos, you see me using gear 11, low star, bad bat squads to take out relics all the time. They can handle it. At number 7, we have Stormtrooper Gary, among the most iconic characters in Star Wars. Like when we think of Star Wars branding, Stormtroopers come up more often than like Han Solo and a lot of the named and face characters. Stormtrooper is how we think of Star Wars. And with the addition of Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, he's become a lot more valuable, especially with his value with Aiden. His relic numbers have been climbing, but he's still a largely ignored character. He's solidly in the luxury zone. And even though we recently had that Dark Trooper Moff Gideon datacron, that Emperor Zerg datacron, I used it without the Stormtrooper relic, even though it's it's not as good without Stormtrooper there because I had to use uh, Dark Trooper, which negated a portion of that cron. But that's because I'm a free to play player and he's still a bit of a luxury for my account. But we cannot be ignoring him because of how thematically important and symbolically important the Stormtrooper is for Star Wars. He also turns out to be one of the easiest to gear tanks in the game. So if you've been stopping at gear eight, like a lot of players have, once you put on that stun gun, you can take him to gear 12 basically for free. With Stormtrooper, 489,000 players have him at level 85. With the star distribution, only 678 
guys at that seven star level and then here's what i'm talking about gear level eight that is where most players have them and that's because that's where the stun gun first appears and there's i don't believe any more carbantes after that level that's why i say he's so easy and it and that is an old mode of thinking because really all characters all old characters are relatively easy these days but in terms of relics only 37,000. that's less than some of the characters we've just been talking about and looking at that is a small amount of relics for a character who is no longer useless he's actually quite a bit of a pain on certain squads so you can see for the thematic and symbolic reasons and for the fact that most players have ignored him he is a strong candidate to end up as a prerequisite and number six we have boba fett Sin of Django and in earlier versions of this list I had him as high as number three but when I needed to knock somebody down it kept being him. Now as a conquest character he's a little bit harder to obtain and that is both an argument for and against him because CG does like to make harder to obtain characters prerequisites but at the same time they tend to delay when that happens because they want as many players as possible to engage with new content to at least spend towards it and with Scion he's been in the game probably just long enough where where he can be considered and we've had conquest releases be prerequisites before with the razor crest he's also not very useful fewer players have him at relics because of that but with these rare releases like these types of characters these conquest characters cg tends to make them relevant at some point either with new releases to get paired with them or with updates these are not characters that get ignored for too long and we've already seen cg make some improvements with in Grand Arena by adding Chieftain's Ami to pair with Scion of Django. And he is an example that illustrates how you can use the information in this video because I just volunteered to take him up to Relics unprompted because while preparing for this video, I noticed he's probably a guild territory battle need. So I saw Scion as an opportunity to both help out the guild but also protect myself from a riskier roster investment because there are other platoon characters who have far smaller chances of long-term relevancy whereas i think he's a pretty safe bet to be investing into now that isn't something that every player can do all of the time sometimes it is important for guild health to do lower quality relics but in the situations where they overlap therein lies opportunities where you can do multiple things at once as a conquest character this gives the player data a little bit more of an interesting reference point we have 129,000 at level 85 144 at seven stars and gear level distribution we have 56,000 at relics and that is a sizable percentage of the of the scion of Django's who are in the game but it is still a relatively small count but at 40 percent or nearly 40 percent of all the scion of Django's it does show that most players who have him have brought him to, to at least gear 12 or higher ahsoka tano fulcrum she reappears on the list and moves up one spot into the top five We've seen her become far more useful in the past two years in a unaligned force user squad, but she has still avoided becoming a prerequisite character. One of the few reasons she's a great candidate, though, is she is a slower farm, relatively speaking, to other marquee releases. But most importantly, this time, Ahsoka had a show. And in the next six to 12 months, there's going to be this period where we are likely to see releases related to that show. And there's a limited amount of characters who are worthy of a galactic legend status and ahsoka the white is a character who may achieve that status with ahsoka and the player data i do think it prudent to remind everyone this is not reflective of all active accounts it does include a lot of dead accounts we have 430,000 at level 85 but that is compares interestingly to the 600,000 who have her at seven stars most players have brought her to seven stars if they're engaging with the content but the gear distribution this is what i find most interesting because there's only 55 or 56,000 who have brought her to relics only seven percent of the ahsokas within the data set and really her gear is all over the place and a quarter of players have just completely ignored her at gear one and one thing i want to emphasize is sir junda is awesome and is completely usable at three stars she the way that her kit works she elevates all unaligned force users and makes them very powerful 
powerful and very resilient so it doesn't matter if they are at lower gear or at lower stars you can check out some of my older videos from around the her character release for how i was using her she could beat relics no problem so if you're one of those players who are ignoring an unaligned force user squad you could probably build a fairly functional gear 8 unaligned force user squad and get a lot of work done kiati mundi reappears in the same spot for two big reasons his status as a territory battle character territory battle characters right now we are at 50 50 on them turning into prerequisite characters and we are also in a prequels moment and that increases the chances that th it could happen sometime soon because we could see something related to ships or characters as cg is generating prequel related content now cg typically does want players to be able to engage with new releases which that does raise some questions because he was a little bit harder to obtain but there has been a lot more time to obtain cam especially since the last time we put this list together and he is now obtainable in other ways that he wasn't before he is also a character that a lot of players have ignored even though he's an excellent relic character especially paired with Kellerin these days just any Galactic Republic Jedi squad is going to benefit from his presence so it is one way that CG could make one of those relic investments that both functions with their interests and helps out the player base and the player data shows the lower levels of access where 114,000 have him at level 85 star counts even lower where we have only 59,000 at seven stars and the gear distribution reflects that to a certain extent but it also shows that out of the players who have him at seven stars most have brought him to relics so 43,000 compared to the 59,000 at seven stars so that is something where cg may consider okay Okay. players who have cam at seven stars have him at relics but also a lot of players just don't have him and they might push them towards going after the shards a little bit more heavily or if they wanted to sell a pack that's something that they could do sabine wren at number three she is a new addition to the list i also think she's one of the more surprising characters to be this high on the list but she's been in the game for a long time and while not useless she's also not particularly important and she's adequately usable at gear 12 for instance the phoenix third sister counter works fine at gear 12 on sabine and also she's not particularly ignored because of the crate dragon raid a lot of players did take her to relics but she was a major character in the ahsoka show so any future content related to ahsoka may use her that means a gl ahsoka or like a balan skull legendary the data shows a surprisingly high amount of engagement there's six 624,000 at level 85 and most players have her at seven stars which I find surprising because there's not a lot of reason to take her to that level the gear distribution though is a little bit more like what I would expect to see we only have 142,000 at relics that is a healthy amount of relics though and beyond that almost as many have her at gear 12 and then the rest is a little bit all over the place with a huge amount at gear 8 next up we have the imperial pro grid who did finish in the top three last time but has climbed a spot higher in this version of the list again how characters are farmed greatly impacts whether or not cg makes them a prerequisite character and ipd as a territory battle character is a bit harder to obtain especially for newer accounts who skip and move past the early tb quickly really these days unless you are in a brand new guild you probably just never engage with getting ipd shards at a high rate and then you are left to slower to farm options where it's actually a bit more of a pain because now there's opportunity cost you place your resources on getting a character like ipd who doesn't have a ton of utility or do you go after those other characters who you do know right now how you are going to use them and gain access to gls or journey characters or legendary characters where going after those projects makes a lot more sense right now than going after ipd shards for myself i just recently in the past month or two took mine to relics when he had a datacron i used him for about a month with afra i felt comfortable with the relic because i felt like there's a future in which he's definitely going to be required at relics plus he is another character who overlaps with tb requirements so if you want to do your guild a favor this is another place where you can feel safe putting
making those kinds of investments in. The probe droid data is a little shocking to me. We've got 299, about 300,000 at level 85. We have 262,000 at seven stars. So you can just see how few players have him at seven stars despite how long he's been in the game. And the gear distribution, only 16,000, 4% of the IPDs are at relics. And we don't even see that many more at gear 12. Most players reasonably have ignored IPD. And I just want to emphasize this character again because it's basically guaranteed that he is going to become required. I'm surprised it hasn't happened already. And so even though you may have other uses for those resources, don't forget about this guy. It's going to happen at some point because I think the last time I made this video, I was stressing out about IPD because it took me a long time to farm him because I did not finish him before my guild graduated from the IPD territory battle and repeating her status as the number one character in the game to become a requirement for something at some point treya reclaiming the top spot i'm shocked she isn't a prerequisite for something yet but her day will come as i said in the last video raid characters are prerequisites since that last vid she did get an awesome omicron but even me i still haven't taken her to relics even though i will be soon. But because she's an awesome character, you see that also reflected in the player data. 509,000 at level 85. You see most players have her at 7 stars, 523,000. The gear distribution, 30% of players, 181 at relics. That's still not that high of a number. And then you can see another 25% at 152,000 have her at gear 12. So basically half the player base has her at gear 12 or higher, which is a, a position that is strong to take advantage if she did turn into a prerequisite character. And then you see the rest at smaller numbers spread throughout. And if she's a character you have ignored, there's not a lot of reason to do it anymore. She doesn't require any Kairos. She's pre-Kairo, which means all that old gear, even though there's probably a bunch of stun guns and carbs I don't remember on her, that's not a pain point anymore. She's too awesome with that Omicron not to use. When that Omicron went active, I'm pretty sure mine was at gear 11, and she was still crushing. She's not a character to be ignoring. She is a powerful weapon, even paired with non-relic trio, with Scion, with Nihilus, because even though I love Sith, I didn't have a lot of reason to take them up higher, and you can don't even have to go too far back into my own grand arenas to see how useful they are in a Kyber 2 level, just being strong and competitive options. That's how awesome she is and her Omicron is. Now the last thing I wanted to do before we wrap up is take all of that data and make it mean something and compare each number against each other. This is the relic counts for each of the characters on this list. And you can see Ezra, Sabine, Treya, they have some very respectable numbers with only Ezra and Treya above the 150,000 threshold. And you can see Visus is also there in a pretty healthy amount approaching 100,000, but shy of it. But really you see IPD and Clone Wars Chewie being the standouts at the low end. And then you see Omega, Gary, Kiati Mundi, all kind of sharing a similar level below that 50,000 threshold. But we will wrap it up there. I want to be doing more list videos more regularly. Hopefully they can be something that is a little bit quicker on turnaround than some of the other videos, some of the other like themed playlists that we have, like the methods videos. Th those take a long time. There's some that I'm working on. Uh, but these list videos hopefully can be an easier thing for me to do over the weekend so that we can have a larger diversity of content on the channel. So if you appreciate these videos, let me know. And so that I can keep staying motivated and finding the time to get these things out. So thank you for watching. Be excellent to each other, everybody. Still plays Galaxy of Heroes.